Now it's time to answer more of your questions. Our first comes from an email from Rebecca in Los Angeles. She writes, Dear doctors, I was recently diagnosed with a benign cyst in my breast, and I was told that I need to have it removed. What can I expect, and should I worry? Since Rebecca's question is so common, we brought her here along with Dr. Christy Funk, a surgical breast specialist, to help us answer it. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you. Hi, Christy. Hi, Dr. Hi there, Rebecca. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Sure. And this is, this is so important for women out there to get this information. First of all, what exactly is a cyst? A cyst is a dilated sac of fluid that develops in the breast tissue. And it, one out of a thousand may harbor a little bit of weird cells inside, so they are predominantly benign. But it is a breast mass, and if a, if a woman finds it, I mean, it can be a, a big source of stress and concern. Oh, you can have a woman writing her will, then and she's just scared to death it's cancer. Are women more predisposed to get cysts? Certain women are. Cer certainly women headed toward menopause. So in your 40s is the most mm -hmm. common time to get cysts, and then... If you're postmenopausal and taking hormone replacement therapy, that extra boost of hormones will generate cysts in your breast. So very common. 50% of women have cysts, and 20% can actually feel them. So if a woman is feeling a cyst, will she be able to tell the difference between that and a, maybe a more malignant growth? She'll never know. Okay. There are a few more calming signs. For example, a cyst is very smooth. And if you push it, it may even kind of bounce away from okay. your finger, where cancer tends to be a little grittier. But the truth is always going to be a little imaging study to see if it's filled with fluid or cells. And if it's fluid, it's a cyst. If it's cells, all bets are off until you biopsy. And typically, these can develop more quickly than other types of masses. Is that true? Very true. Sometimes, it, particularly ovulation, something that would trigger a hormone surge, you can go to bed without it and wake up with it, which is, it's not concerning to me. That makes me think it it's is a cyst. A but to the woman, scenario. it's Absolutely. panic time. Because I know in Rebecca's case, she had a mammography back in October, which she was told was relatively clear and then she finds this pretty sizable mass in her breast that uh, I mean it really freaks out. And your out. point is that if there's no mass and there's a mass the next day more likely to be a cyst. Much more likely to be a cyst however there's always that day a woman does feel a mass and it does turn out to be cancer. Yesterday she didn't feel it today so she did it so it's out. still you always need to and, check and it that's, out. So we have you here today to, to show what you're going to do exactly. for a cyst. What's the next step? Okay, so when I meet someone with them, I first do an exam, I make sure I can feel the mass and make sure that's the one she's feeling. Then I quickly just do an ultrasound. So when I put the ultrasound probe down on a mass, a little bit of normal breast tissue there. Breast tissue right here. Yep. And the All upper of the part of your ultrasound, correct? And now when I roll over, there's boom, a cyst. That, that black circle, very so, so sharp black is borders. Fluid. Black is fluid gray and shadowy black can be cancer, but you see how sharp the top mm -hmm. and the bottom, like you drew it with a pen, cyst. The way you get light going right under the cyst, you see that bright white gray on the underside there? That shows that the ultrasound beam is going through fluid. It can't go through cancer. It bounces back I, and that's dark. I mean, you've seen a million of these. I mean, in your mind, you see that. You 100% know. benign. Okay. Not that's worried at all. Good news, like Rebecca. Can do. There is something we can do. We can get rid of that fluid. Are you ready? Okay, quick alcohol swab just to clean the skin. This is how easy it is. Now, will you ever send this fluid for culture and, and cell I do. Counts? I send it when I'm worried. On the count, I have to talk to Rebecca for a second. On the count of three, little poke, Rebecca. One, two, three, poke. It See that needle? Right, right in that Watch cyst. This. Watch the cyst. Basically, all that's collapsing. That There's my is needle. so... Cool. Pulling back, I'm going to get every little drop out of here, Rebecca, so it doesn't come back. Rebecca, you're doing okay, you, right? You are yeah. good, Doc. You are done. We've got wow. a beautiful chocolate color. I do sometimes send cyst fluid for analysis. We want to make sure there's no cancer cells inside. So who has a cyst sent for fluid uh, analysis and who doesn't? Anybody who's postmenopausal. Remember, those older ladies, cysts aren't so normal. I always want to look at that fluid. Other women who have any trace of blood in that fluid, it must be sent. And finally, if I aspirated this cyst on Rebecca two weeks ago and she came back to see me and it's there already again, that's odd. I want to send the fluid. How about just the history of breast cancer? I know Rebecca has history in her family. Does that make a difference whether you send the sample or not? Honestly, no, but I always give the patient the option okay. because to her, it feels more likely that this could be cancerous, so she wants 
the extra reassurance. But in truth, having a family history and a gorgeous, perfect, simple cyst like that on ultrasound doesn't worry me that at all. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, I, didn't, I hardly felt I it. Think, I think that's so I'm important for women out there to gosh. know how simple and easy, and that mass is gone. So now when Rebecca, what she was feeling before is gone. It's gone, and it won't come back. Okay, how about, I want you to help me out on this. How about some helpful tips what women can do to prevent cysts from forming? I know they're hormonally based, so... Very I, true, hormonally based. So if you're having a real cyst problem, like they're painful and they're recurring, taking birth control pills can actually mellow it out and take the cysts away. Stopping hormones, if you're a 60-year-old lady taking them, will make those cysts go away. Caffeine is a stimulant for cysts. So that, so is, that is true. You hear that, true. women with fibrocystic breast disease, they should try to lay low on the amount of caffeine. But I will you say this. you a lot of chocolate? I, I'm not giving up chocolate, and I'm not giving up caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest. Spoken, like, at least spoken you're honest. like a true patient. If I only have to go through this, which was painless, and I get to keep the chocolate and the caffeine, <laughs> I would do it too. I don't understand what the, <laughs> the point is. And I agree with Rebecca in this. The uh, caffeine can only cause a little bit of pain and some cysts. And if that's not bothering you, drink up, because it does not cause cancer. And, caffeine and, does not. And sodium intake? Sodium makes you retain water. So if you already have some cysts, those are going to get bigger. So watch your so salt. So watch your salt. And we always say this on the show, but one more time, women, get to know your breasts. Self-exam. If you do find a mass like Rebecca did, don't wait on it. Don't be scared. Go see your breast specialist. I agree. Thank you both. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good